All right, so to continue our tutorial series on functions, we're going to talk about how to identify today functions graphically. Now, in order to figure out how to identify functions graphically, I really think it's important that we continuously always review how we found these, um, how we find functions algebraically and numerically. Because they all coincide together. They all are related together. All right, because they all go off the same premise. Remember functions for every input, there is only one output. Okay? So when we do this, um, what we have is for algebra, we said if an equation can be written as a function of y as a function of x, that means x is the input, y is the output. And for solving for y, which we recall was the output, because we always solve for the output, okay? There can be, cannot be any plus or minus, or, or two values, because then that would mean there are two values of y for every value of x. And that goes against our number one definition, the thing that we hang our hat on. For every input, there is only one output, all right? For every input, there's only one output. For every x value, there's only one y value, okay? So, we look at some different equations. You can see them up here. But how do we determine if these equations could represent y as a function of x? Well, the first thing, if we want to graph these, we have to solve for the equation. So you can see at the bottom, I have each equation solved. But how do we do that? Well, we get y by itself. Okay, isolate y. So in here, we would take y, subtract 3x squared, plus 6. And we realize we have a parabola. And that's where we get this right here. And we graph this, and we see that the numbers create a parabola, and we have this. Now, our graphs are made up of points, inputs and outputs, a coordinate grid. And when we notice this is how do we determine if a function for every input has one output? Well, we can use what is called a vertical line test. A vertical line test allows us to see if a function or if an equation or a graph is a function because as we draw an imaginary vertical line throughout this, we can move it back and forth, and this line, imaginary line, can only hit the equation graph in one spot. Okay, only one instance. Here, it hits it only in one spot, so we would say that yes, this is a function, which makes sense because there's no plus or minus, so yes, this is a function. Now we come over here and see 3x squared plus y squared equals 6. And we solve this. Well, this one is a little bit more difficult. We have 3x squared plus 6 equals y squared. And then we solve for y squared. Whenever you solve for a square, you have to bring a plus or minus in the square root. And that's why we have these down here. It's a positive and negative. So when you put this on a graphing calculator, you have to put both the positive portion, positive 1, and you have to put the negative equation. That's why we have the positive equation. This is the negative equation right there. Okay? Now, looking here, you can see that, well, <laughs> this uh, looks a little different than the previous one, which is a parabola. Well, using the vertical line test, okay, and this so also you know, this does connect because there are values here, is that this right here intersects this graph, this line intersects in two points. Here it intersects here and here. So that means that for every input, there are two outputs. So no, this is not a function. We found this algebraically. We can find it graphically as well. We take y equals x, x to the fifth. Once again, solve for y, which it already is. Use the vertical line test. We can say yes. Yes, this is a function. For every input, there's one y output. <coughs> we have this one. We take the cube root of x to the fifth get y. You do not bring a plus or minus with the cube root. You can actually write this as a power function, because if you recall, x to the fifth is actually one third. Use the properties of exponents, and we can write it like that. And as we draw this through, it only hits at one point. We only have one for every input, one output, so yes, this is a function. And moving to the final one, we get this one. We take the fourth root again, plus or minus, or over x. A weird one, <coughs> but once again we get a two different equations: a positive one and a negative one. 
And you see that it looks like kind of like a horn, but as we draw this vertical line, we intersect with two points. Doesn't pass the vertical line test, so this one is not a function. All right, and that's how we can determine using the vertical line test, all right, whether or not we follow the definition for every input. We call for every input, there can only be one output, and we use what's called this vertical line test to help us find it out graphically.